Our restoration program is more than just restoring the organ. It's about teaching people the skills. Charles Bauer has been in the forefront of not only learning those skills, but creating educational films to teach them to others. He has also come up with innovative ways to make the work more efficient. Here he demonstrates his techniques and his thinking. Some of the Flemings, such as this one, have never had their support bridge modification. So you can see here there's this gap. And so what we're going to want to do is put a support bridge on here. In order to do that, we're going to need to cut a groove into the Fleming body. Fortunately, this is a one-time modification, and gradually, as the Flemings are getting reclaimed, uh, the modification is being done. So here's how we're going to do it. To do this modification, we're going to use a special type of saw blade on a table saw called a dado stack. Uh, in this case, this is a 3 8 inch dado stack. Um, I can actually put my finger here right now because the saw is unplugged. Uh, if the saw were plugged in, we wouldn't want to do this because this blade can make mincemeat out of your fingers. Um, you can see here, it's basically two saw blades side by side, and in between, there's a set of chippers. So this can actually cut a groove. So to do this, we're going to use a special guide that we're going to put on the table saw. And what this basically will do is it's going to carry the Fleming over the blade and cut the groove for us here. So here, using a support bridge as a reference, uh, we can set the height of the saw blade by adjusting it on the table saw until the top of the blade is level with the support bridge. So the next thing we're going to do here, we're going to make a test cut on a piece of scrap wood before we actually make the, the modification. And this will check to make sure that the height is set properly. And that looks perfect. So now we'll go ahead and we'll put the actual Fleming body. And there we have it. For the next step, we're going to mix up some high glue. So we're going to take a mason jar and we're going to place it in an electric glue pot. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some crystalline hide glue, which is purchased commercially, and pour it into the mason jar. Once the hide glue has been poured in the mason jar, we're going to pour some water in around the jar and inside the jar to make the glue into a liquid. Uh, the glue will take a while to heat after it's stirred. Basically, once the glue is heated and in a consistency of maple syrup, the glue is going to be ready to be used for the next step. Here you can see the heated glue ready to be used for the next steps. for the next step we're going to go ahead and put the support bridge in. Uh, we already pre-cut <coughs> a couple of support bridges on the table saw um, so we have them ready to go. So to do this we'll put some high glue into the groove here. And we'll put a little high glue on the um, on the support bridge. And then we just go ahead and put it in. The other thing that we need to do here um, for the larger Flemings, we need a little felt bumper in here so that the fiber disc on the back of the pouch doesn't hit against the wood on the inside because that would make a clicking noise. 
that would actually be audible outside the chest and possibly outside the instrument. So what we do is we pull the high glue there and we go ahead and we glue the fiber disc right there. Once the glue has set, we're going to be ready to sand the support bridge flush with the Fleming body. And we'll do this on a belt sander. And so we set, we can sand the front surface flush and then we'll sand the edges flush until everything's nice and smooth. If there are any other imperfections on the Fleming body, we'll sand those at the same time. Now that the Fleming body is ready for new leather and restoration, we have to prepare the leather pouches as shown here. Uh, we buy leather from Columbia Organ Works that's ready to use. In this case, the red leather is sheepskin leather. And we cut it into strips using templates that we have a set of that are designed for the appropriate width of the Fleming body that we're re-leathering. So once we have the leather cut into strips, then we the next step is to cut the actual pouches out of the leather strips. Here we're actually cutting the pouches, and again we have templates for each different size Fleming body, which are standardized in four main sizes. So we take the template and we actually mark the part where the valve is going to go and where the hole is going to go in the bottom and cut a rectangular pouch body. The next step is to punch the hole in the bottom of the pouch. So to do this, we use an arched punch as shown here, and we can punch several at a time. Once the pouches have been cut, we're ready to actually start building the valve assembly onto the pouch. And to do this, we glue fiber discs of the appropriate size onto the back of the pouches, as shown here. We can then turn the pouches over. Once the pouches are turned over, the pouches are rolled with a rubber roller to promote good glue adhesion and also to see the outline of the fiber disc on the other side. Then we glue the felt and leather valve to the top side of the pouch. This is where it's helpful to be able to see the outline of the fiber disc as we don't want to use any excessive glue, but we want the valve to stay firmly attached. The felt and leather valves can be either purchased commercially or can be punched. Once the valves are in place, we can turn the pouches over. The next step for high pressure pneumatics, we've standardized on cylindrical springs, which require a felt ring to support them. For low pressure pouches, we use a shoe peg in the hole in the middle. In this case here, we're showing gluing the felt ring onto the fiber disc. With this step completed, the pouch assemblies are ready to be leathered onto the Fleming body. They can be put aside for the glue to thoroughly dry. The next step is to prepare valve spring assemblies. For the high pressure Flemings, we use cylindrical springs with felt rings, so it's necessary to glue the felt ring to the cardboard discs and then glue the spring into place. So we apply a little bit of glue to a cardboard disc and put the felt ring on. Once the felt rings are in place, we can glue the spring by placing a small drop of hide glue into the felt ring and placing the spring in place. The assemblies can then be placed aside until needed in a subsequent step. One final step before assembling leather onto the plumbing body is to chamfer the hole to make sure that there are no sharp edges 
at the hole in the plumbing body. And to do this, we use a power drill with a spherical burr, which works really nicely and smooths the opening out. Now we're ready to apply the new leather pouch to the Fleming body. Uh, in this case, I found that a mat with a hole cut in it is very helpful to allow the pouch to sit flat on the table. So the first thing that we do is glue the top and bottom of the pouch to the top and bottom of the Fleming body. To do that, we apply some hide glue both to the top of the Fleming body and to the heel, and press the Fleming body down onto the pouch, centering the valve assembly over the hole. Once the leather has been applied, the leather is rolled in place with a rubber roller to promote good glue adhesion. And here we see it again from another angle. We're going to apply the glue to the heel section of the Fleming body and to the top of the Fleming body. Once the glue is applied, looking down through the hole to line up the valve, we press the plumbing body into place and roll down the glue surface. This next view shows the process looking down from above and again we put the pouch in place and then we apply glue to the Fleming body. When using hide glue it's important to complete the steps quickly as if the hide glue starts to polymerize it won't adhere. So it's important to work quickly while the hide glue is still liquid. Here we're applying the hide glue again to the top of the Fleming body as well as to the heel section. And you can see we can line up the valve assembly by looking down into the hole and make sure that it's lined up. Once the glue has adequately set, the next step is to secure the sides of the pouch. The positioning of the sides of the pouch is important, and so we want to have the valve held in nearly its finished position while we're securing the sides. To do this, we use a height jig to hold the valve at the appropriate height while we're putting it together. Uh, this height jig is one that I built for this purpose that works with any size Fleming. Once the height jig is on, glue is applied to the side of the Fleming body, and the leather is secured in place. Once again, a rubber roller is used to provide good adhesion. The process is repeated on the other side. And again, uh, hide glue is applied. and the area is rolled to provide good adhesion. Once the leather has been applied, we're ready to trim the excess leather. To do this, we'll use a rotary cutter. We will trim both edges with the rotary cutter and trim any off the ends as needed. The next thing is the notch for the screw hole needs to be cut out utilizing a number 11 X-Acto blade. This works best if you cut against the edge of the wood with the goal being not to remove any wood since the wood is the part of the plumbing that's actually going to be reclaimed in the future. After the glue has had a chance to set, we're ready to actually put the pouch spring assembly in place. So we take the pouch spring assemblies that we prepared earlier, and we're going to apply some glue inside the felt ring to secure the spring, and we're going to apply glue to the outside of the hole in the back of the Fleming body. We then can put the spring assembly into place and because the spring is going to be under compression we need to hold it under compression to do this a lead weight is convenient 
and so we can put the lead weight in place and put the Fleming body on a rack for the glue to set while the lead weight holds the spring in compression. The next step is to apply the heel blocks. So the first thing that we do is we take the heel blocks, which in this case are new, but we can use reclaimed heel blocks, and we start some wire brads in them. I prefer to hold the brads with hemostats so that I don't hit my fingers with the hammer. Uh, surgical mallet is actually works perfectly for this step. We then take the Fleming body and we will apply some hide glue to the bottom of the heel block and around the hole in the Fleming body itself. Once the hide glue has been applied, we put the heel block into place, lining up the bottom of the heel block with the body, bottom of the Fleming body, and lining up the notch for the bottom screw hole, and then we can drive the brads in place with the mallet. The next step is to size the inside of the hole with some hide glue. This step will help prevent wind leakage from around the heel block. We then apply some hide glue to the face of the heel block, and then we can apply the leather gasket, which has been prepared earlier. The Fleming body is now complete and ready for sealing. For this part, we're going to prepare some silicone to seal the Fleming with. So we'll take some silicone caulk and put it in a container. And we're going to want to do about a 10 to 1 dilution with naphtha. the salt on the naphtha. So once we've made the silicone solution and we're ready to apply it to the pouch of the Fleming. And for the last step, we're just about done here. So we're gonna do a final quality check on the Fleming now that it's been sealed. And the first thing we'll do is we'll press it down and make sure that it actually holds, where you can see this one is holding well. Uh, and then we're gonna also check to make sure that a number 10 wood screw will fit into the slot on the top and bottom of the Fleming to make sure it'll be easily installable. In this case, the screw is a little bit tight. So what we'll do is we're gonna take a wood rasp and we're gonna just make the slot a little bit bigger there. And so now the wood screw will fit easily. So it'll be easily installed in the organ. We don't wanna to have to struggle with this inside the instrument. Now that this one is ready to go for the last thing, we're gonna label it, put my initials on it, I'm gonna label it high pressure, and we're gonna put the date, which right now is 1222.